Hey, Coach, and I'm going to go ahead and mute my uh, microphone and turn it over to you and let you introduce yourself and get started, okay? All right, thanks, Rob. Uh, welcome, coaches. Uh, my name is Larry Gombos, uh, Coach Gumby, and this is the first time football coach presentation. Um, just to give you an introduction to myself, uh, again, Coach Gumby. Uh, I've got nine years under my head coaching youth football as an assistant. I've never been a, a head coach. Um, I've had opportunities. I just uh, don't feel like I'm ready. Um, I've coached my son's team from second to sixth grade. Then he was forced to quit football to focus on hockey. And after that, I uh, coached for three seasons uh, for other people's kids. I've coached in uh, two different leagues. Both of them are pretty big leagues in the Denver metro area. Um, and along the way, I learned the hard way what works and what doesn't. So I've, all the mistakes you can make as a, as a young coach, I've done it in uh, spectacular fashion, fashion. And I've also uh, got a combined probably 18 seasons coaching other sports, baseball, um, roller hockey, ice hockey. Um, so I know my way around kids a little bit. I know my way around sports. Um, let me back up a second. So the whole idea behind this uh, presentation, um, when I was coaching with uh, a guy named Mike Mahoney here in Denver and his son Keenan, the uh, administrators in our league were asking, um, they were talking about let's have a, you know, a clinic for first-time coaches to help these guys uh, get off the ground. And um, no, nothing was happening on it, so I just said, you know what, let me put something together. And I did, and I volunteered to do it. It kind of lost steam, and I forgot about it. And then uh, one day I was on the uh, Dumb Coach Forum, and uh, someone asked, hey, does anyone have a, a, a rookie coaching presentation I can borrow and I said yeah I happen to have one and I posted it uh, coach Rob saw it apparently he liked it and uh, he called me up and asked me to, to do this so so here it is um, so as we go along if anyone has any questions just feel free to type them up in the chat and uh, I'll, I'll answer them you know don't feel like you have to wait to the end or anything so if anyone has a question or a comment go ahead and uh, type up so without further ado, um, let's start with uh, what I was taught to be the role of a coach, and that's to take a player or a team to a level that they couldn't do on their own, all right? So if you set a bunch of kids loose on a football field with a football, they're going to run some plays, they're going to go out there, and they're going to whatever, right? So a coach's job is to take them further, and the gauge of how good of a coach is how far you take them. That's, that's just pretty straightforward stuff. Um, my philosophy in coaching is you put your players first before everything else. And that includes the parents, the other coaches, your own ego. Put the players first. It's, it's about them. It needs to be about them. Um, I'm a process before outcome coach, and uh, we can talk about that later. But basically, um, an outcome coach is the one that sit sit there and tell the kids, hey, we're going to win this game. If we don't, we're going to be running. A process coach is the one that's going to sit there and say, listen, line, I want you to fire off the ball. I want you to maintain your blocks. I want zero penalties. I want ball security, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You take care of the details that are part of the game, and the outcome will take care of itself is the way I feel about it. Um, I believe that uh, it's okay to win, and it's okay to really want to win bad, okay? It's okay to be competitive, be very competitive. Um, I bring this up because when I first started coaching, there was a big uh, a big uh, poster in the office of the uh, local league that said, we are not a win-at-all-cost organization. And I thought about that, and it, it always bothered me. First of all, no one is a win at all costs. You know, no one's going to poison a kid to win a game. You know, that's taking it to one extreme. On the other hand, to sit there and say we're not a win at all costs organization tells me that you're already apologizing for the fact that you're about to lose. You're already making an excuse. So uh, having said that, I, I believe that winning is an outcome. Preparing to win is a process. But it's okay to want to win. And um, 
Dave Potter on here is a guy that's been my mentor for a really long time. I've learned more about the game from him than anyone else, and uh, he's going to choke on this one. But sometimes it's okay to lose to me, it, it, and I only qualify that. If you never lose, you're in the wrong league, okay? And sometimes you're going to play someone that is just way better than you, and winning is just not reasonable. So would you rather play well and lose or play poorly and win, I guess is the, the philosophy there. And if you're playing uh, poorly and winning you know, and happy with that, you're fooling yourself. If uh, you're one of those guys that I don't care what it is, I have to win, I have to win, I think that's unreasonable. So what I'm saying is just uh, context. Understand why you lost and understand what you need to do to fix that. Um, so along those lines, um, you know, the part of your job as a coach, you either make it rain or make it shine. And it goes back to this uh, point that I made that, you know, hey, you lost, but hey, we played a really, really good team. And we did a lot of things well. And, you know, a few bounces here, a few bounces there, we lost. It's up to you to make it rain or make it shine. On the other hand, you win, and it's really ugly, but your kids are celebrating like it's uh, the Super Bowl. It's your job to make sure, hey, we didn't really accomplish anything today. Um, it's my belief that losses are always on the coach. So if you lose, it's your fault. You didn't teach the kids. You didn't prepare them. You did not feel the team that was ready. However, when you win, I always want to give uh, credit to the players. Um, that's just that's just how I do it. Um, I don't believe that wins and losses are the measure of success. Um, you have to define success. Um, fo football is a, a very important game to me. It uh, goes well beyond you know moving the ball and stopping the ball from moving. We're building young men here, and uh, character counts. The the Going back to Dave Potter, he's the foremost expert on building character on, on kids. He's got a great program. Um, I'll point you to the resources to look into that. But success doesn't, you know, you could be 0-10 and, and still have a successful season is what I'm saying. You can have a 10-0 and 0 season and not have a successful season. Um, it's okay to demand excellence from players. I, I hate the, oh, they're only eight years old. What do you expect? Well, People will live up to your expectations. Kids will live up to your expectations. If you expect them to be excellent, chances are they will be. If you expect them to be subpar, they definitely will be. I think it's important for uh, coaches to work harder than the players, something that I call coach hustle. Um, you go to any football field, any practice field around the country, and uh, you hear people yelling, hustle, hustle, hustle. You expect your kids to sprint every drill and everything like that. But how much is that coach hustling? Is he uh, studying before practice, after practice? Is he breaking down film? Is he doing all those things that you would expect your player to do? It just you happen to have a whistle around your neck and uh, wear a ball cap. Um, everyone on your team deserves to be coached. Everyone, especially that kid at the bottom that's uh, you know a buck nothing can't. Uh, chew gum and uh, walk at the same time, that guy deserves your attention because he's your player. Um, and that goes along with this. If you're on my team, my goal is that you'll play. If, uh, if it's up to me to pick a team, if I pick the kid, he's playing. And I'm not going to pick the kid. I'm going to play. Now, for most of us, we're not on these select teams. You just get who you get. If that's the case, fine. You owe it to every single player on that team to teach them to contribute in a meaningful way to your to your team. Um, along those lines, um, make a commitment to that last 10% on your team because it's easier to take a kid that's at a 20 out of 100 and get him to a 60 than it is to take a 90 and make him a 91. And... Uh, if that doesn't make sense to anyone, what I'm just saying is you can make a lot of progress on the lower half of your team where if you spend all your time on your absolute stud, he's still going to be a stud. He's just you know, you know, slightly better stud. And um, last on this one is uh, never let lack of talent be an excuse. Uh, 